Hi classroom. So last class we started off soil resources. So today we'll complete the second half of soil resources. I think from this sketch you would have understood what it is about. It's about how we are losing soil in many different ways. So the second part of soil resources is about soil erosion. You would have heard the word soil erosion many times in your smaller classes, but we'll be learning in detail what is soil erosion, what are the types. And what are the many ways in which we can control it? What is the government doing about soil erosion and other information as well? The term soil erosion is not new for you. You would have heard this term many, many times. But to again recapitulate the meaning, we have written down this definition. As I always tell you, you can rewrite the definition because this is my understanding of soil erosion. Uh, if your understanding of soil erosion is aligned with this. If you want to improve this definition, if you want to add on some words, please do that. But at the same time, make sure that the meaning does not change. So these are the points that I've included in the definition. It's a gradual removal of the top soil due to the effects of geographical forces of wind and water over a period of time. So it's not suddenly happening. It takes time. And how does it end? It results or and resulting in the complete alteration of the landscape. So if it's slow or gradual, then it's soil erosion. If it's only the removal of topsoil, then it's soil erosion. If it is because of geographical forces of wind and water, then it is soil erosion. If it is not happening very fast, but over a period of time, and if it is con concluding by, we are able to see a change in the landscape. If all these things happen together, then it can be termed as soil erosion so here is a picture of soil erosion and how it has completely changed or altered the landscape of this place totally the main agents we discussed that geographical force of wind and water but if we if we differentiate the main agents that initiate soil erosion there are many many agents one is moving blowing wind the next one is flowing water which might be a river or a stream then glaciers also initiate soil erosion. Ocean waves, constant waves which come to and fro to the land from the ocean. Gravity, very important thing. Uh, gravity, when there's a steep mountain slope, because of the weight of the solid rocks or the sand, it might just fall off after some time. So gravity or the downward pulling of or that pulling force of gravity can cause heavy rocks to just tumble down or roll down which is also soil erosion overgrazing by cattle and construction activities by human beings all of these other factors also cause soil erosion but this is something similar to soil erosion but far more uh, famous or far more uh, known to the outside world and that is mass wasting this might be a term which is new for you or which you would you would have heard it before but it's a very similar to soil erosion but it is not soil erosion it is under the category of soil erosion but here what happens is it's mainly occurring because of gravity so because of the weight and the top layer is moved or top layer just slides down and it's mostly evident in hill slopes there are so many types of mass wasting uh, soil creep is mass wasting rock fall is mass wasting slumping is mass wasting landslide is mass wasting there are many many types of mass wasting that's a totally different topic altogether but it is related to soil erosion because mass wasting is also the removal of soil but mainly gravity is involved and it's mostly seen on hill slopes so that's how soil erosion uh, works and and it's that's the relationship it has with mass wasting and these are the important agents moving into the major types we'll be discussing about nine major types of soil erosion some would be discussed in your textbook some would not be mentioned but please do make a note of all these nine important types of soil erosion which is very critical you must know all these nine types at least have an understanding of it. number one this picture you would have seen it before in your last class as well this is leaching so leaching is the removal of soluble material always remember it is not the removal of sand here it is the removal of soluble material because in sand only some parts are soluble some are still insoluble even if a small grain of rock is there it might still be insoluble there's only some parts of 
soil which are soluble so only that soluble part is removed within the top layer of the soil leaving behind bigger insoluble particles and it occurs mainly in heavy rainfall regions so with every type please do note this point where does it occur where can we see this kind of erosion i cannot see this kind of erosion in a, in a desert region can i see leaching in a desert region no because rainfall must be always there and there must be presence of soluble material so all these factors are important so whenever you learn about a particular type remember to know in which region can i find it in which region is it gonna be possible to see this type of erosion so this is leaching number two here you can see a wide gap which is deeper more deeper than it is wider so this is a kind of erosion which is called gully erosion so what is gully erosion the formation of large ditches ditch is a large hole or a large depression uh, or you can also call it small valleys because it's similar it looks similar to a valley between two mountain ranges but it's a flat land and it's just a small valleys or it can also be called large ditches the official term of these large ditches is called gullies this is formed due to fast moving water where do we get fast moving water we get it in the upper course of a river you can see the diagram on the right hand side it indicates the upper course of the river on top of the mountain slopes on so these kind of regions the water is actually very fast so in brackets i've written more undercutting when erosion happens because of water there are two kinds of cuttings that happens or two kinds of removal of soil happening cutting is just the removal of soil is it removing downward or is it removing sideward when you go to the lower end of the river mostly the river will not the valley will not be deeper and deeper it will just be wider and wider because the water is low so the erosion takes place on the side that is side cutting in gully erosion because it is happening in the upper course water flow is very fast and actually the removal of soil takes place below sideways it takes place less and downwards it takes place more you can look at the picture on the left and understand that it is more deeper than it is wider but there's another erosion we'll be learning which is at the lower end of a river which is more wider than deeper which is called stream bank erosion so this is gully erosion where there's more undercutting and happens in the upper course of a river the third one you can look at this and understand it is formed by oceans so this is called coastal erosion the formation of high and steep sea cliffs due to a constant action of sea waves or ocean waves to and fro to and fro every day there are thousands and thousands of sea waves that hit the shore and go back so every time the ocean waves hit back it actually continuously starts eroding again and again and again and this is spotted in coastal regions so leaching is spotted in heavy rainfall regions gully erosion in the upper course of river uh, regions and coastal erosion along beaches or in coastal regions you can see that every time it erodes it deepens the inside of the cliff and makes it possible the cliff or the upper portion of the cliff to fall on the right side you can see dotted lines which is the former cliff position so it erodes and the top portion just falls off then again it erodes then the top portion just falls off you can see a horizontal dotted line which indicates wave attack zone which means that above that horizontal line there is no possibility that the wave can remove the cliff the wave can remove the cliff only till the height of that horizontal dotted line but after that there has been so much of removal the top part will be extended outward and because of weight it will just fall down so these are the three kinds of erosion and we'll be learning about more later here is the next one this is the other kind of erosion because of river when i was teaching gully erosion i told you that there is another kind of erosion where down cutting is less but side cutting is more this is that erosion where stream back erosion the removal of the sides of the river bank due to the change in water level in the river over a period of time this is spotted mostly along the river courses or lower courses of the river or the other one gully erosion was the upper courses of the river this is the lower course of the river where the speed and flow of the river is very slow so it's very easy to understand when the flow of the river is very slow it erodes on the side more when the flow of the river is very fast it deepens and erodes more on the bottom so this forms more side cutting and you can look at the diagram on the right side and understand how the bank of the stream is 
completely eroded every time water level changes so if there's more rainfall there's a higher amount of water level if there's less rainfall there's a lower amount of water level the next one happens in gentle hill slopes and it is called sheet erosion the sliding of top layer of relatively a gentle slope due to gravity and action of uniform flow of water that affects a wide area unlike other types and spotted along the gentle slopes so that is called sheet erosion when there's a huge amount or a large area where there's a gentle amount of water and gentle speed of water uniformly flowing it just erodes away a total region like a sheet it moves downwards that is called sheet erosion the last one in this slide is rill erosion the removal of soil by small narrow water channels so rill erosion and gully erosion do not confuse it gully is also down cutting but it is much more deeper and much more larger in size but rill erosion is formed when small narrow channels of water just a small amount of water is just flowing as narrow channels and it is branched so much another difference is in gully erosion there is not much branches there is one big gully but in rill erosion there are so many branches that is dividing again and again and again so on the right side there is a person who is just testing the depth of the rill which has been formed so these rills are formed when water as small stream small narrow channels branches out and flows through easily erodible or fine loose soil the volume of water increases this rill erosion will become gully erosion because all the small rills will be connected together and it can remove huge amount of soil moving to the last three this is glacier erosion you can look at the diagram on the right and understand when the glacier is moving because of the weight how at the bottom of the glacier the rock get actually crushed and it becomes broken and it becomes powdered and as the glacier moves in a direction it starts taking the soil also or the stones also the removal of soil by grinding action of the large mass moving mass moving mass of ice from snowy mountains the rocks underneath of the glacier get crushed and transported due to the pressure of the glacier you can clearly understand that in the picture on the right and on the picture on the left you can see a photograph taken of glacier erosion where there is a mixture of glacier this is after the glacier has moved and you can see it has actually transported soil also underneath then you come to wind erosion you can look at the diagram on the right there is two kinds of rocks within that piece one the dark is more resistant the light is less resistant so you can see as wind is blowing the more resistant rock is not worn away or not eroded much but the less resistant light brown portions are eroded much so that is why wind erosion in desert regions um, cause this unusual unique shape where some parts of the same rock are eroded more and some parts are not eroded so wind erosion is the removal of some parts of a rock which are less resistant than its surrounding parts which are more resistant to create a unique structure We've seen mostly in desert regions where there is a presence of strong winds throughout the day the last one is other factors like cattle and human beings cattle due to grazing they remove a lot of soil and make it prone for erosion human beings we do construction of large scale structures like dams or tunnels and we also do mining activities and quarrying like how it's shown in the picture these all breaks up the rocks and makes it easy for erosion to happen so other factors like overgrazing and construction by humans are also important reasons why erosion takes place so we were discussing about how many types are there now we can talk about what are the ways in which we can prevent in this i'm not going to explain it uh, by writing so there's nothing given in written material but there's a lot of pictures so while i explain it in the words please be very careful to take a note of it so constructing bunds bunds is just blocking water channels and uh, it reduces the speed of water this is a bund uh, in some other places it can be just cement sacks which are put on a moving flow of water it is not to stop the water please understand constructing bunds is not to stop the flow of water but to reduce the speed so if the water is flowing at 30 km per hour after the one it will go be flowing at 15 km per hour 
so it reduces the speed so obviously when the speed is reduced erosion is also reduced number two afforestation along hill slopes if trees are planted it holds the soil really well it doesn't allow the soil to be removed so that is afforestation or planting trees number three shelter belts shelter belts is also kind of planting trees but it is planted in a unique pattern you can see that there's crop cultivation going on and there's a different kind of fields for agriculture but in between there is a strip or vertical line of trees this line of trees is actually perpendicular to the direction of wind so if it's parallel to the direction of wind it is not gonna reduce any effect but if it is perpendicular it is actually blocking the direction of wind and when the, it is blocking the direction of wind the wind cannot take away any materials from the soil or it cannot cause erosion so it's a very unique and easy method just by planting trees in a line you can reduce wind erosion next is strip cropping where different kinds of crops are alternatively grown this makes the soil much more uh, adaptive to different kind of crops and doesn't allow the soil to be dry and easily exposed for erosion this gabion walls is the new method and it's also called walls caging or rock caging where huge rocks when it kind of can tumble down or when the slopes are easily can cause mass wasting or erosion huge rocks are arranged and it is tied with a metal wire or cage so this doesn't allow the rocks or doesn't allow the soil to slide down so it's all called gabion walls you can also write it as rock caging or wall caging next is gully plugs so these are done in gully erosion regions where huge gullies are formed so you can plug those gullies by arranging big huge boulders or huge pebbles or gobbles on the gullies and by plugging them you can you can just reduce the flow of water or reduce the speed of water and that will prevent the amount of erosion that is happening the third one is shortcrete fractures so shortcreting is the method which they are doing right now so if there is fractures in a rock if there is fractures in a rock it can easily cause that huge rock piece to break and tumble down if there is loose soil that also can cause the soil to easily slide down so short creating is a method when you pump concrete in a high pressure hose just like how you have a water hose this hose which is like a huge tube on the side has a nozzle in the front and you pump concrete and mixture of other chemicals at a high pressure these chemicals do not harm the soil it just binds it together and makes it tight so that it doesn't slide down again it's an expensive method because it's at high pressure but it really protects it short creating is mainly done in tunnels where uh, when tunnels are constructed a huge rock mass is just drilled out through a mountain or through a hill so that up the remaining rock which is above uh, the tunnel can easily fall down and crush the tunnel so there will be fractures after you break the rock or drill through a, a drill through a mountain so usually short creating is done in tunnels uh, to bind it together and make sure that it is tight and the whole hill doesn't crash down or mountain doesn't crash down so these are these methods are actually used in everyday construction of large scale things also terracing hill slopes is the most common method of erosion which most of you i think everybody would have seen so this l shaped terracing prevents uh, erosion or reduces erosion to a significant amount because water when it flows down a gentle slope or a steep slope it can flow very fast and take away soil but if it is flowing in this manner uh, like steps it obviously reduces the speed of water so that is terracing of hill slope and the last one is contour plowing contour plowing is uh, plowing across the contour and flowing along the contour so plowing is a method we have to do for agriculture and plowing is actually making the soil more and more loose so we cannot say that we are not going to do plowing and do agriculture we have to plow so what can be done is when you plow from one contour to another contour contour as you learn in topography is the altitude of a mountain or a slope so if you plow from one contour to another contour you are actually making it more loose for the hill slope 
to slide down but if you just flow along the contour not across the contour for example if you are flowing at 100 meters in height just flow all along 100 meters and just leave it then go to 200 and just continue to flow there but if you start flowing from 100 to 200 along the slope that will make it more and more loose and easily allow the soil to slide down so do contour plowing should be done only al along the contours and not across the contours so these are all the different types of preventive measures there are some conservation initiatives taken by the government what are these one is integrated watershed management so what is integrated watershed management this aims to increase the catchment area catchment area is just the storage area so there is a area where we can store water uh, and prevent rivers from flooding so this is mainly done in the ganga basin where eight rivers which are branches of ganga are prone to flooding to prevent them from flooding because flooding will also cause a lot of destruction and life and loss of property and also more than that erosion also will happen these rivers cover seven states and one union territory all across the eastern and northern part of india by absorbing more water through increasing the catchment or increasing the storage amount what can we do we can uh, prevent floods we can also reduce erosion so erosion can be reduced and floods can be prevented so this is the integrated watershed management concept by the government what is integrated watershed management making catchment areas collecting more water preventing floods reducing erosion that's it it's as simple as that number two reclaim reclaiming ravine areas ravine areas are the areas where there is a lot of erosion that has already taken place like how gullies have happened those are ravine areas it started in 1987 1988 madhya pradesh uttar pradesh rajasthan and gujarat have started this program it involves in the construction of bunds to protect ravines increasing in size so you saw gully plugs in ravine and uh, bunds which are preventive measures so those are done in these kind of areas to prevent those ravines or gullies to become bigger so how can we prevent it from becoming bigger by reducing the erosion how can we reduce the erosion by constructing bunds and blocking the gullies third one is the control of shifting agriculture this is a unique thing that is started in 1987 and 88 in arunachal pradesh mizoram manipur meghalaya other northeastern states like sikkim tripura me nagaland all these northeastern states together everybody do agriculture over there and this focuses on settling families or resettling families from one place to another and one place to another so that is the concept of shifting agriculture where you move from one place to another and when farmers move from one place to another they need, they need a place to stay also so this initiative by the government helps the families to settle down in new places when they do shifting agriculture it also helps them to do terrace farming it also helps them to find fuel and fodder and food for the cattle and help them to do agriculture in a better way so these are the three important concepts and initiatives started by the governor okay we'll end today's class with this interesting video most of you would have seen this person uh, the person in the white t-shirt and holding a plant on the right side is actually a farmer very simple farmer from assam from the state of assam but he has done something really amazing he has started planting trees he was planting trees for over 40 years and now he has covered a huge forest so we are learning about erosion we are trying our best to understand the concept but what are we doing or giving back to the society this is a small interesting thing it's not very far away in our country um, just in the northeast not much far away a man like him who hasn't learned as much as you maybe he hasn't done the 10th standard like you maybe he doesn't have a good family background maybe he doesn't have enough money but still he is giving back to the environment more than us we are learning so much but we are giving nothing but he didn't learn much in school but he give is given back the environment a huge forest so it's the story of a man named jadav payan i want all of you guys to remember his name because people like them go unnoticed so much in our country and they must really be honored and awarded and followed by young people like you so his name is jadav payang and this is his story guys 
I have never seen anyone more impressive than this guy. Hi, my name is Zadapayak. I am a farmer. Because this guy, with his bare hands, planted a forest. But first, let me tell you his story from the beginning. Jadav is a 60-year-old farmer. He has a family of five and he lives in a modest home in northern India. But next to his home, he saw trees were dying. The river was flooding, the animals were fleeing and the land was disappearing. He saw deforestation. But instead of doing nothing, this farmer did something very simple. He planted a tree. Every day, he cut a branch from his trees, walked for 20 minutes, took a boat, crossed a river, and walked for two hours more to get to an empty piece of land with nothing in it and planted a tree. This is amazing! He did that day after day after day for three months a year, year after year for 40 years until his trees turned into a forest. A real green beautiful forest that went from this to this. It's too good to be true, but we're standing in it. His forest is estimated to be 550 hectares big which is the garden central park in new york the trees that he planted are now dropping seeds to the ground and now they're growing even by themselves and after many years animals started showing up at his forest elephant tiger rhino deer his forest attracted wildlife and greenery and it has become possible for him to farm in it and make a living one day this farmer was discovered by the local media and he turned into a sensation in his country people called him forest, forest man of, of india, india. Presidents congratulated him and gave him prizes and conferences invited him to speak there. This simple farmer has become a role model for millions of people. He's an inspiration for all of us as he's planting many more trees and he's making a desert into a forest. 40 years after he started, Jadiv still plants trees on a regular basis. But his next goal now is a little bit different. We want to write a book on how to plant trees. He wants to write a book with his friend. Because they believe that if we educate kids, just like his kids, on the importance of nature from a very young age, we can fix today's problems. And he wants to spread that message as wide as possible. And I will never stop.